episode 147. I didn't think that your average college degree was was completely necessary for me. My first women's board conference in February of this year, I got to meet Donna Wagner, and she, I got to hear about the aftermarket management program that they have at Northwood University. I start my fall semester here on Monday. Welcome, aftermarketers, to Remarkable Results Radio. Listen to learn just one thing from today's episode on your journey to remarkable results. Hello, aftermarketers throughout North America and around the world. Carm Capriato here, and thank you for listening to Remarkable Results Radio. That is available for your listening pleasure on our website, on Apple iTunes, Google Play Music, Spreaker, and Stitcher Radio. And welcome to episode 147 with Jackie Walter Hauer. This episode is brought to you by Federal Mogul Motor Parts. Search for parts, get the latest technical updates, and sign up for their new Garage Rewards loyalty program at their all-new website, fmmotorparts.com. Hey, thanks for your incredible support for our premier automotive aftermarket podcast. I'm grateful that our listenership is growing by double-digit numbers, and our insider newsletter subscriptions are also exploding. And thanks for sharing episodes in my posts on Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. Your support and listenership brings so much respect to the guests that have paid it forward by sharing their stories. Keep up the sharing work you are doing to keep this great audio resource growing. And my hat's off to you. Now meet Jackie Walter Hauer. Jackie is the Operations Director of Zimmerman's Automotive in Mechanicsburg, PA. It's a big job since the company includes service, used cars, and a quick loop. Jackie is the daughter of former guest Judy Zimmerman Walter. I met Jackie at the spring 2016 Women's Board meeting and realized that as a young woman in the aftermarket, she has a great story to tell. And let me summarize in a few words why Jackie's story resonated with me. It's a family business, third generation, and they're working on a succession plan. She started working in the family business before she can remember as she cut her teeth in the pits in the quick loop. She's working toward her bachelor's degree online from Northwood University and is a mother of two boys who finds the time for all that she is going on. I thought she should share her story for you and learn where Jackie is in her young life as an important leader in our beloved aftermarket. Here we go. A warm welcome to Jackie Walter Hauer from Zimmerman's Automotive in Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania. Hello, Jackie. Are you ready to go with us and talk about your remarkable results as such a young woman? (laughs) I am, Carm. How are you? Hey, I'm great. Oh, man. Well, your mom's been on before. and uh, has. Yeah, we talked. She says, hey, you know, maybe sometime, Jackie. And I says, you know, it's time time to bring on the third generation of Zimmermans. (laughs) Yep. Wow, what a... What a tough thing it is for third generation, and uh, I, I, I want to get into that with you a little bit. But in the meantime, so how did you start in this great business? <laughs> I guess you could say from birth, um, much yeah. like my mother. Yeah. Um, it it was basically our shop was my second home, and it was it was where I went after school when I got off the bus, and it it was just you know if my parents weren't at home, they were here. And it was, it's just was a huge part of our lives. Huge. Well, I was third generation and the same thing happened. Now <laughs> I need to ask you a question. How close was the house to work? Five minutes, two, three miles. I was one block. <laughs> and so when, uh, when dad would call up and says, Hey, what are you doing? I says, Hey, we're going to go down to the school and we're going to play ball. And he goes, no, you're not. <laughs> did, did that happen to you? Every once in a while, yeah. <laughs> so when you really joined the business from a, you know, a really working in the business perspective, what was your first job? Within this within this industry, my first job was actually helping in our quick lube uh, with our courtesies or vacuuming of the interior of a vehicle, washing windshields and checking tire pressure. Cool. What would you learn about customer service? That... Even if you're having a bad day, you really need to just paint a smile on your face because that's really what the first impression they want to see. <laughs> yeah, I've heard a great quote: "If you're having a uh, if you're having a bad day, you're really having a good day when you work in yeah. customer service." Yeah, very much so. So, in the quick loop bays, 
What was, you know, a great memory from work? Would you ever go down into the pits and actually change oil then eventually? I did. Yep. I actually worked my way through the ranks in our quick lube um, and actually became uh, assistant manager at our Zimmerman's location here in Mechanicsburg. And then in uh, 2008, we opened up a uh, location in Hummelstown, which is about 30 minutes from where we are, about Hershey area. And it um, and I was manager there for a couple years for our quick lube there. Being able to work with some of the people that are actually still here, it's that was an honor because it I learned so much from them and it was it was fun. You know, you bring up such a great point. A family business, you grew up, they they watched you as a baby and they're still mm-hmm. there. You just mentioned the fact that they're still there. Yep. Is it tough for them to look at you as a person that can actually make a decision and ask someone to do it when they were the ones who were always growing you up in the business? If it is tough, I don't really see it. Uh, I think w- one of the biggest things is our quick lube manager is is a distant relative, very far off. Yeah. But um, he he's become like a big brother to me. And now that I'm in a position where – I, he comes to me for things, it, it, almost the, the conversations and the questions just come naturally. And it's almost like you're just bouncing things off of your friend, just to try and get an idea of what we need to do, where we need to go with certain things. Well, kudos to you to have a, a real nice transition, uh, because mm-hmm. obviously you must be making decisions in the company. Yeah, I am. <laughs> Respect to you for having earned that that leadership piece. So schooling. Mm-hmm. Uh, wow, I found out a couple of very interesting things. Uh, share it with me. Well, when I left high school, I did go to two years of uh, college. Um, I did one year at Penn State, and I did one year at Eastern Mennonite University. About that time, about the time I was finishing up my sophomore year, uh, our our quick lube and car wash opened up in the Hummelstown area, and I was approached by my parents, you know, a training a position is as a manager valuable that quick loop and, and I wanted to take it. Um, and I was ready to go other, other industries while. and, you know, continued education once I is so important because if you don't to keep the point up where with it, you're this is what I wanted behind. to do. I wanted to be in this business. I got to the point where I didn't think that having a, a, a college, a, your average college degree was, was completely necessary for me because it, it didn't pinpoint to this aftermarket industry. Well, then I went to my first women's board conference in February of this year. I got to meet Donna Wagner and she, I got to hear about the aftermarket management program that they have at Northwood University. And I came home and started doing some research and I applied within weeks from that from meeting Donna and I actually have just I start my fall semester here on Monday so well Donna's been on the show and uh, yes. yeah, she's a great lady and so that connection at the women's board brought you to the uh, earning a deg- you're going to earn a degree from Northwood yes, I am and you're working from home online mm-hmm. and how long is it going to take you uh, it should take me about two years which means that they must have given you some credits from your first couple of years at school. They did. They did, which is going to be quite helpful to get this done in a timely manner. <laughs> That's just excellent. Tell me about your school challenges. How are you being able to fit it all in with kids and work and school? It's tough, but I have a uh, a rock star husband who who's really cheering me on and is making sure I'm getting my schoolwork done, which is quite helpful. And um, and the nice thing is, is I'm able to just take some some extra time here and there from work and and work on my schooling. And so it's it's so far my I did a semester I did a class over the summer semester here, and it was challenging, but. Um, I'm starting to do the work for my fall semester and it's, it could be, it's, it will probably be challenging as well, but it, it'll be different, I think, from that class. What's the toughest, uh, your toughest takeaways from an online training course right now? I think not being in a classroom and it's more of a, it is visual as well as a lot of reading and I'm a very visual person, but it's not like in a classroom, it's a lot more visual 
Uh, so that will be one of the biggest issues for me is trying to trying to learn on a more reading basis than so much visual. Got it. What what about collaboration? Can you get a lot of collaboration online? Yes, I can. Yep. There's a lot of um, they have what what they call discussion boards with your with your classmates, which helps. Uh, that was quite helpful for when I did my first course over the summer. Uh, we were doing. We were getting together what's called um, a PLA assessment, a prior learning assessment, and it's to help us petition for work-life credits, so cr- getting credits for classes that we already – things that we already do in our day-to-day career and um, being able to skip those classes by petitioning for them. And you know, some of the things that we had to do were, were difficult, and so being able to discuss with – with our classmates in these discussion boards was so helpful. It changes your gears on how to think of things and makes you think outside of the box. Got it. And it's great. Discussion boards, valuable. Mm -hmm. Very. Good for you. I'm talking with Anthony Frowine, a technical product specialist with Federal Mogul Motor Parts. Anthony, when you're in a shop, are you talking tech as well as product? Whenever I do a physical training, there is product incorporated part of the whole uh, training overall, but it's to maximize the time, whether it's diagnostics, whether it's inspection, whether it's installation. So that way they understand that, hey, by skipping that extra 20 seconds by putting on this set of brake pads and not replacing the hardware, hey, this might be the reason why that I'm getting comebacks. And usually being a ex-shop owner, I understand that the first time you get paid, the second time's free. And so are the techs really starving for this information? Oh, Absolutely. Um, a lot of times you have, uh, I mean, we live in an industry where I like to like to say they, they cut the, the, the roast in half and they don't understand why, but they do it just because they've always been doing that type of an industry. So, you know, to break it through that, they've been doing something for 30 years and they see as they haven't been doing anything wrong, but it starts to open up their eyes to, hey, you know what? It wasn't necessarily wrong, but there is a better way. So you're really talking to me about an aha moment. Exactly. And tell me when you see that happening um, more and more from technicians that you're out with, uh, how does it make you feel? Oh, it's awesome. I mean, you really feel like you're giving back to the community overall. But ultimately, I, I tell them, you know, I look at every single vehicle that I worked on prior to or I had my customer just like I'd put my family in that vehicle. I look at it as... I'm keeping everybody else that much safer because the job's getting done correctly. Federal Mogul Motor Parks' Garage Gurus is your go-to source for the vehicle training, technology, and answers you need to keep your next job on track. On site, online, or on demand, the gurus are here to help keep your business and your career on the road to success. Visit fmgarageguru.com. Well, I'm glad to, I'm glad you're doing something with Northwood. That's great. And you know, here here is this is what's fascinating to me. Third generation, uh, if everything goes right, succession plans work. Uh, third generation's got a great business. Yeah, a little debt to pay over some time, but still, you got a great business mm-hmm. that you would commit for a further education. And that says yeah. an awful lot about you, knowing, you know, you don't know everything that's around the next corner. And you want as much education as you can possibly get to help yeah. you to help you with uh, the long haul that you have in front of you. Yeah. And in this industry, it's we've always said, especially with like our technicians, is, you know, training is extremely valuable. And um, if you, even if you look at other other industries, you know, Continued education is so important because if you don't keep up with it, you're going to fall behind. Yeah. So tell me about the women's board. You were you were at the the meeting. I think it was it may have been in March, early March, but I'm not. <clears throat> I was there, and I think yeah. I met you for the first time. Yes. Yep. And uh, it was a great meeting, and you met Donna there. What uh, What do you like about the women's board? Oh man, what don't I like about it? A uh, women's board is great. Um, the, my first meeting, I actually ended up going by myself, which was definitely different for me. Um, I I can tend to stay in my shell when if I'm not if I'm new to something, and this was quite new for me. And so traveling to Florida from Pennsylvania by myself was quite different. <laughs> was it your first major trip like that? 
uh alone? like this yeah. yes alone yeah. yep yeah. yep it was the first time so i was ner- first off i was nervous just leaving my husband and the boys alone together <laughs> <laughs> um and we were working on some big projects at home because we just we just sold our house this summer. So we were preparing our house to be put on the market. I followed I followed that on Facebook. <laughs> yeah, it was quite the quite the uh, experience, but I'm just glad it's over now. Yeah. But but yeah, so that was big for me. But once I finally got there, got to meet some of the incredible women that are there. It. It was so much fun. I enjoyed it, and I couldn't wait until Indianapolis, which was just here in July. These trips are just incredible, and I'm, I wish I could go to the Anaheim one, but I can't, so I'm going to miss everyone. But the connections and the relationships that I've formed so far have been incredible. Uh, Jill Trotta from Repair Pal is my mentor, and she's so much fun to talk to. <laughs> she is. Yeah, I know Jill. I, I she's I, a great woman. Let oh, me yeah. tell you, <laughs> yeah, she sure is. She sure is. So, um, your biggest takeaways with the women's board is basically, I, I hear you say, mentoring. Yes, yes, very and much so. They've got a really unique program. Any, I think it's you can raise your hand and say, "I'd love a mentor," and then they they find out a little bit about you, and mm-hmm. they have a little profile of the mentor, and they actually put people together. And uh, I, I witnessed that for the first time. And uh, and now you're living proof of how mm-hmm. good mentoring is uh, inside that organization. Well, yep, yeah. Hey, well, thanks, thanks for that. So, Jackie, you were telling me about a great specialty that you're working with and on at Zimmerman's. We were approached by a couple of people that said that it might be a good idea for us to uh, at least have someone on staff that is certified in uh, child protect or child safety seats. And once we got to think about it, we noticed that some of our techs, if they had to remove a a safe or child seat because of some sort of repair that they had to make, um, they wouldn't actually install the seat back in. They would turn it upside down to, to let it stand out to the vehicle owner that, Hey, we had to remove your seat, but we can't put it back in because we aren't certified in it, and we don't want to take on that li- that kind of a liability and just the d- d- danger for your family. I don't think many uh, car owners are happy about that, are they? Probably not. <laughs> right. Yeah, and it, it we felt bad for doing it, and so what we did was is. Um, In March of 2015, I went and took a four-day course, a very, very intensive course from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. on getting certified in in installing car seats and having that kind of a training. And it... When I got there and most most of the people in the class were first responders, you know, your EMS, firefighters, police officers, when I told them, or, or hospital staff, when I told them I was with an automotive facility, they were like, that is probably the coolest thing that we have seen and have never had anyone in our classes do that. And I was like, wow, I never even thought of it. And I to me, it's something that's important, and I don't know how many how many seats have to be taken out for repairs. I mean, we don't do it a, t- a lot, but but now that I have this certification, we have customers that come in say, "Hey, can you check my seat while it's here for an oil change or an inspection?" And it's it's real simple. It's it's easy to do, and and they're so thankful. It's a free service to them. And it's it's safety for their child. Can you put a notification up that says, hey, if you're getting a hey, grandma, you're buying a car seat for your new grandchild that's coming up, uh, we we will make sure it's installed properly. Is that a way to market it? Mm-hmm. And actually, um, now that you say that, we've, we had a customer that bought, that went from a, a smaller SUV down to a, a smaller sedan, and they were curious to know if the car seat would fit. So they had asked me, would you be able to install it in this other car and see if it'll work? I said, I'd be happy to. 
And by me doing that, they got in the front seat to see if it was comfortable for them in the front seat to have that car seat behind them. And it sold the car for them. And they were so thankful because they wanted to get this new vehicle that they'd been looking at. And and I installed – and then once once they officially bought the vehicle, I reinstalled them in this new car and, for them. And they were quite happy with it. Do you see yourself reaching out to any parts of the community, like the police and or government, to to say, hey, go over and see Jackie? She's she's the one? We actually um, – there's a national database called Safe Kids Worldwide that – that has has us down as an inspection station. Okay. All right. And so we are on that national list as well as uh, we we work with a local organization called the South Central PA Highway Safety that um, will come out and do car seat checks with us. Since there's only two techs and sometimes those car can, can accumulate a lot of people to come and get their car seats checked and it's it can take a, about 30 minutes sometimes right, just right. to make sure that car seat's safe itself as well as installed properly and so they've been a great partnership for us and actually child safety seat awareness week is coming up uh, and and so we i actually just planned a car seat check with them here at our location do you see this as a revenue source not so much a revenue source, um, maybe to bring awareness to uh, our, cu- our families and customers that our community that we're here to help provide them safety on the road. Being able to provide something like this for our community free of ser- free of charge is is huge, I think, and it's it's very very welcomed. Great news! Hats off to you. Yeah, Jackie, what's your the biggest strength you bring to the family business? I try to see what I can do for our community, what we can do for our community. And one of the things that I have taken a hold of in my position is planning our events here at the shop. Um, we hold an annual car show every year. And, and, one and of the, it was just last week, I think. And yeah, I, and I saw Saturday. your mom's posts. And, man, what a big event. It it was definitely smaller than we've had in the past, but it was much real more relaxed, I think, for all of us. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's always a fun time. Um, one of the big things that we try to do is is we don't most car shows you have to there's a charge to register your vehicle, and that's one thing we don't do. Basically, what we ask is that our our registers our registered car owners bring. Uh, two canned food items for our local uh, food pantry, New Hope Ministries. And they do more than just food pantry, but they're basically the organization that we use for all our our events. Um, we did a family service day in April for 20 families. We did um, free service, free maintenance services to vehicles for those 20 families. And it Excellent. it was huge, huge. <laughs> well, we've had Suzanne Hawley, their executive director, on the show before too, mm-hmm. and and uh, I'm glad to hear that. Uh, you know, there's a little bit of a connection there. That's 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 just great. She's great. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it's great. So you're doing the events. Uh, obviously, you can step into the quick loop any time, right? <laughs> I can. <laughs> I can. <laughs> you're going to school. You're doing car seats. Is mom proud? I think so. <laughs> That's good. Jackie, anything holding you back right now? I don't think there's anything holding me back, no. I have a great support system in in my parents, and we have such an incredible staff here that we've worked really hard on on preparing to allow us to go on trips like to the women's board yeah. or just vacation in general. Right. And so I feel like that, you know, having our strong staff and the great support that we have is is definitely what we need to be able to to achieve what we want to. Great, great. Hey, what are you learning from mom? A lot. She is incredible. She's always been my strength as far as with all this business, this business world. And she is a great, she's a great mentor for me okay. as well. And she 
if I have any sort of question on anything in the industry, she'll if she can, she doesn't have my answer, she will find it. Is she a good listener? She very much so is. And sometimes do you, do you just talk to her and she never gives you an answer, but you end up figuring out what your issue was? <laughs> yeah. Isn't it amazing how that works? Yeah. 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 <laughs> it <laughs> so, is. Sometimes you just have to go on record and uh, it's it's happened with me before and I says, never mind. Thanks. It was great. I figured it out. You know, yeah. <laughs> okay. So you're a young person in the industry, and which is one of the reasons I wanted to have you on. And in your very young life, can you think about what the best piece of advice so far you've ever been given? I can. Uh, it's not all about me. Ah. Um, we do have to take care of ourselves, which of course is very important. But the one thing to remember is, is it's not all about myself. Uh, there's and that's it's one thing we go by is, is it's it's not all about us and our business by taking helping take care of our community helps us out as well as helps our community out and so it just helps our hearts feel like we have taken care of someone else and i think you know with with saying it's not all about us taking care of our community is not only just helping them it's helping us so yeah. it's it's kind of like double sided you're taking care of both so you're a young person uh mm-hmm. doing a lot of things uh i've been in your shoes before <laughs> so what's going on in your mind when you think about the next 3 to 5 years next 3 to 5 years things will really change around here at zimmermans um we have just started the process of our succession for the owners. My mother and my two great uncles, so that'd be my grandfather who started the business, his two younger brothers, uh, were the two that are with my my mom on the right. ownership team. And they have many more grandchildren than my mom does, my mom and dad do. But And it's one thing we're trying to just kind of, you know, don't have to be at work every day. It's time to start it's, to start thinking it's tough about to what let go. it is. Yeah, it yeah. is very hard. They they are two they are two men that have always come to work every day. Yeah. Woke up and came to work. They were always here. They're always here. It's good to have them around for sure. And and we're not trying to kick them out, but right. we want to make sure that they're taking care of their families too and yeah. enjoying their families. They they both have uh, children that live out of this area and are for a little further away. And so we want to make sure that they know it's okay for them to take their time and and go spend time with their family. Got it. You know, you're driven. I mean, that they're yep. from that generation. I I know it. I understand and uh it's it's a challenge for generation 3, but it is probably a big enough challenge for the generation that needs to succeed because mm-hmm. um I guess you just have to tell them this. Hey, let's do the deal. Let's let's find a great, you know, plan. Let's all agree to it. And you know what? You can come into work every day. Every, I mean, you know, it's it's almost like, uh, what do I do? I mean, the, the reason a lot of people just don't want to do anything is because they don't know what they're going to do next. Yeah, exactly. But, but they have to have that freedom to know that the, the business is in good hands and they're going to guide it. Well, hey, I'm so glad you came on. Uh, a young person doing so many th- great things in our industry. And of course, the daughter of one of my one of my favorite guests, uh, <laughs> Judy Zimmerman Walter. So uh, I'd like to say to Jackie Walter Hauer, uh, give us some great words to live by. Well, like I said, it's not all about it's not all about me. Okay, you know, seize an opportunity if you feel like it's something you want to do. Like with my schooling, I just wasn't sure where I wanted to go, and then I met Donna and met and met and learned more about Northwood, and that's when I was like. I found it. I'm doing it. And I got the support I needed and I went for it. And, you know, seize the opportunity if you have it. And don't be afraid to say no if you can't take it on. And sometimes we hesitate and we lose. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Hey, Jackie, thank you so much for being on. Thank you. I appreciate it. Hey, guys and gals, thanks so much for listening. Now, find additional show notes on Jackie Walter Hauer from Zimmerman's Automotive on the show notes page. Easily find it at RemarkableResults.biz slash E147. That's also the place where you can watch Facebook Live reruns and subscribe to be an insider. You are an important reason I bring you these interviews so you can profit from the wisdom found in each episode. 
So help spread the word to unite our industry. And I'm grateful, grateful for your support. Thanks for being on board to listen and learn from another inspiring aftermarket professional. Until next time.